All right. So tonight, this is Paul. We're going to be doing a Benza training. Um, everybody hear me online? You can stand and talk that way. Um, yep. This is going to be super basic, like navigating through how to download the app, how to get a map um, on into a Venza, and then we'll have a video that's going to kind of show um, how to put waypoints, track things, um, really basic entry level. We can, this fall or at a later date, we can go into more of the advanced type stuff, and I'll point some of that stuff out as we're moving moving forward through this, but you can create folders and take maps and label them folders. So there's a lot of really cool stuff we can do, but I wanna first and foremost, make sure that everybody can navigate through this. So first question, does everybody have a lens on their phone? Mm -hmm. Excellent, okay. So, and if there's, I'm a Apple guy. So if there's Android type specific questions, I'm, I may be able to help you, but I'm, I'm not an Android guy. So. This is more Apple based, but as far as getting maps into it, if you're a, uh, one or the other, you should be able to navigate it. So we can go to the next slide, Bill. So this is different maps that you can download. So georeference PDFs are, are a type of map that you can download into a Venza. You can get QR coded, which on wildfires, a lot of times they'll have an IAP or wherever it may be. The QR code that you can just snap a picture of it with your QR reader and it'll bring it up and, and you'll this will make sense, but download it into a Venza and then you can use that map. You can take from Dropbox, which once all of our pre plans are done, we will have there's QR codes on each tactical map, strategic map. So we'll have those that if you just want a few of the strategic maps, just load it into your Venza at all times. You can have that. So there's a lot of different options. And then any email PDFs or, or forms that you can that you can download into Avenza. Next slide, please. perfect. So for those of you that don't have Avenza, that's what it looks like in the app store. Um, pretty simple, download it. Sounds like we all have it and have downloaded it. So we can go to the next slide. So this is an example of the Jefferson County <clears throat> Polygon map. So this is the evacuation map that Jefferson County sheriffs and Jefferson County is going to use with all the fire districts within Jefferson County. So this map, I emailed to everybody, all the officers this morning. So y'all should have that. So what we're gonna do, if you haven't already done it, we're gonna walk everybody through how to take this map and any other map that you get emailed that's a PDF form um, and get it into a Venza so it's a usable map. Um, Perfect. So if you take that email and click it on your device, it should bring it up and you should have the arrow on the far right, the box with an arrow. So if you click that box, once you get it open, then it's going to bring up this the box underneath it, and there should be an Avenza platform or icon in there. If there's not, you can hit the more button and scroll down and you should be able to find Avenza within one of those two areas. Everybody having thumbs up, thumbs up? And I do want to, I'm going to back up a little bit. So there is, if you downloaded the free version of events, so that, that gives you three maps that you can store on your device at, at any given time. So if you want to download a fourth, you have to delete one of those maps. So the free version only gives you three maps. If you go with the pro version, which I believe it's $120 a year if you're going to pay for it outright, um, the U.S. Forest Service has a program to where they will allow a select few to have that event to pro and, and part of their group, but it has to be, and they will, they will back check it, that you're assisting them, whether it's an IA or within their district, um, to be able to use that map and be able to have the input. So 
certain circumstances, it's not just a carte blanche, hey, I want pro. We have to actually explain why each individual needs this from the Europe form. So that's a big difference between the free version and the pro version. So if we're there, we can go to the next slide. And here, this kind of gives you an example. It's not in that scroll across, then it should be in that more. If you hit more, then you drop it down and events of maps should come up. You hit events of maps and the next slide, there it is. So this should, it'll download it, it'll extract it into events. And this map, once, you, once it's downloaded and extracted, then you should be able to hit that map within the app and it will bring up this map and it'll show a nice blue dot of where you're at at any given point in time. Anybody having difficulties, questions? Yeah, I downloaded it. To your Questions? Cool. Um, so it should automatically put the blue dot, right? Yep. Once you pull up the map in Avenza, right. then you should be able to locate yourself with that blue dot. It does, it does give you a blue Yeah. So in order to do that, you can delete a map and then you can bring another. So just, just a quick um, reference on, on this map particular is I, I um, there's, there's conversation with evacuation and, and what are we gonna do with the polygons and are we gonna get something different? But in the meantime, this is what we have. I like this platform simply because you can be anywhere. You pull up this map and you don't have to have cell phone service. You can pull this map up and if you got a fire going, you can be like, I'm here, fire's going this way, I need to evacuate this polygon, this polygon, this polygon, this polygon. And you can get to go to Jeffcom and say, here's what I want and here's what I need. So to me, it's a pretty, instead of just saying, oh, I want to evacuate from this road to this road to this road, it's already plugged in um, with the, the polygon so you can start preloading. The one thing I will say with evacuations is, if you're, for instance, if you're thinking the progression over the next, you know, 30 minutes to, to an hour, you're going to evacuate three different polygons. If, if there's any sense that you're not going to get a hold of that thing or ring that thing within that time period, it may expand. I would make that initial evacuation a little bit bigger, maybe go out and add two or three more. Because what happens is if you start stacking evacuations, um then the system gets the trunk is this big and you're trying to fit this much data right so it'll it, it takes more time and and some of the later ones that you're calling for can get delayed it's just the nature of the beast so think a little bit bigger maybe you know, with, with some of these polygons um on your initial call to jeff so kind of got a little sidetracked with that but that's a good note since we have this polygon map up is um i like it I think it's a good format. You can go big or you can go small on it. So it's it's a good format. Get used to it. And, and so it doesn't have any roads. <clears throat> if you zoom in, oh, as far as major roads, no, no it's not that detailed. No. It has major landmarks. Like Absolutely. Yeah, if you zoom into it, you can get quite a bit of detail. All right. I believe. One more, and that might be it. Or that might be it. That's it. So now there's a video that we're going to watch, and this is direct through. Um, there's a link here. I'll send out a link tomorrow um, that gives.
Hello, everyone. We are going to get started today. I'll share my screen. There we go. Everybody should be able to see the iPad screen now. Um, we're going to go over the iOS basics for a Vector Maps. Um, whatever we are going to cover today, experimenting will be recorded. Um, so we're going to start off with looking at our Maps tab, going through how to get maps from the Map Store, importing maps, adding place marks, recording tracks, and exporting data. So we're going to start off first in our My Maps tab, which is the screen you can see now. And this is the first screen you'll see when you open up the app. We'll see we've got four maps here, and then our toolbar along the bottom and our toolbar at the top. So one of the most important parts of your maps is your map Sorry. That's okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Am I still cutting out or can everybody hear me? I can hear you right now. It was just, it was a little bit into the technical. Cool. Okay. If you try again, it'll let you know. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, so we're going to start by looking at the map store account, which is your head and shoulders icon at the top right. So if you tap that, you'll see I'm logged into my Map Store account. And this will pop up here. And you can see your download history uh, and change your password and change your email. So if you downloaded maps from the Map Store before or purchased maps while you were logged into a Map Store account, you can access them here. On iOS devices, it is not required to have a Map Store account. But we strongly recommend creating one anyway, so you can access any maps that you have purchased or download from the map store. So if I'm not logged in, this screen will come up and will ask you to log in with your email address and password. And once you're logged in, you'll see these three options. To access maps you've downloaded before, you go into your download history, and you'll be able to see all the maps in your account. So I have a lot of maps. So you can scroll. You may make it all the way to the bottom. <coughs> And you'll have to hit view more, but it will continue to keep going for you so you can see all of your maps. You see at the bottom, get more. If we tap that, it will allow us to <clears throat> view all of them. If we want to install maps, we'll just have to tap the install button here. Just go up to these, and we'll tap the install, and it will download the map to our map store or our My Maps tab. So mm -hmm. you can. You can also install more than one. We'll go back to our My Maps tab, go to the download history, and then you'll be able to also see the information about the map. Go in there, read it, and then download it. So if you're purchasing any maps, we recommend being logged into your Map Store account so you can access them wherever you are. If you have more than one device, if you log into your Map Store account on all of those devices, you will be able to access your maps. To go out of there, we tap the My Map Store account and the Close button. So when you're looking for maps, you can either get them from the Map Store in the app, which is the Store button on the bottom of the shopping cart, or you can get them on our website, themaps.com. You can download them directly to your Map Store account, and then you can log into your Map Store account in the app, or you can import maps. But we're going to look at the map store in the app first. So when you open the map store account, this is or sorry, the map store, this is what you're going to see first. You'll want to tap the find maps at the top or the little magnify maps. And it's going to take you, since I'm on a bigger screen, you'll see the list as well as the uh, as the map. And all the pins represent maps that are available for you to download. So we'll see a bunch of blue pins. We can also see our list. If we zoom in or out, it will change what is in the list and what we can see. And we'll also be able to see the cost. So if we see down here in the list, the Toronto map has a cost of $6.99, you'll have to ensure that 
do you have a valid payment method set up with your Apple ID so you can uh, purchase them out? So any paid stop, you'll need to make sure that you got you have either your credit card or uh, iTunes gift card or PayPal account set up with your Apple ID so you can purchase. If the map says free, then that's no issue. You can tap the button here. So if I choose the Toronto Grilled Cheese Map, tap free <clears throat> and install now, it will just start to install onto my Maps tab. Or if I'm curious about a different map, we can open it to see more information. So we're going to search with our search bar at the top. You can put in the map name of the map. You can put in the region, the city, etc. We're going to look for the TTC map, which is the Toronto Transit Commission. So we'll type in TTC and hit search. And apparently we are not coming to the TTC. We are ending up in the first. That's okay. <laughs> Back. <coughs> our location again. On the bottom right of the map here, you'll see there is the option for location, and it will bring you back there. And now we can see that there is one map available, and it is the TTC map. We just have to redirect the map store back to where we are located. If we want to learn more about this map before we download it, we can tap the little I beside the title. The pop-up will come up, and it will tell us who made the map, how big the map is, when it was uploaded, and then we can also see a preview of the map. So if you tap to see a preview on the map, you'll get three options. You can swipe through them, and the map quality here is not the same quality as you'll get in the map. This is just to give you an idea of what the map is going to look like. We're satisfied with that. You can hit the back button, and then we can tap the free button on the install to download it to our My Maps tab. It's okay. You can press the little X here at the top right. We'll also notice that there is the option on the top of the Find Maps toolbar here for a funnel icon to filter our results. So if I tap that, we have the option here to set filters for searching the map store. So we can see that we can turn on the filter for free maps only. And then we can also look for, say, just topographic maps, recreational maps, map bundles, etc. When you turn them on, there will be a little different. So that's how you can download maps from the map store part. Um, there are more filters available on our website. So if you're looking more specifically, you can always search there. And then again, they'll just be associated with your map store account and you can download them directly from there. Okay, we're gonna go out of the store and then we'll go back to our My Maps tab. So now you can see we've got a bunch of different maps here, but I want to import my own map. So you can tap the plus at the top right between the account and the edit icon, and this dialog box will come up, and it's going to give you a bunch of options. <clears throat> the first two are getting a map from the map store, which we just did, or requesting a map. So you can reach out to us with a link to a map or a file if you'd like to see that map available in the map store. And then there are also other options for importing maps. You can import from iTunes file sharing, so you can plug your device into a computer. Uh, load the file into iTunes and then sync it with your device and import from there. You can import from Dropbox. Uh, you can import from storage locations, which includes any cloud storage application you have on your device, such as Google Drive, OneDrive, Box, and Dropbox. And then you can also import from URL. Or at the top right of this dialog, you'll see a little QR code scanner, and you can import from a QR code. So that's what we are going to do today. We're going to import from a QR code. So the screen's going to get a little wonky for a second because I'm going to open the camera. So we'll have to open that. And then you see if you hover over the QR code, it moves really quick. It will download the map. QR codes are great for distributing maps and sharing maps. Um, but sometimes if you go to scan and import it, you'll realize it's just directing you to a website where you can download the map, or it will download the map right into your My Maps tab. Kind of depends how the person has it set up. Uh, but you can find QR codes sometimes on paper maps, on park signs, public signs with maps already on them, so you can get a digital copy. Next, we're going to look at the sorting options on your My Maps tab. So you'll see at the top left under the My Maps, we have the option for sorted by name. You can change it to sort by distance, date, and storage used. So if I click it to date, 
you'll see the most recent maps are at the top, and then the older ones are at the bottom. It's older and then imported at the same time. You can also sort by distance. And sorting by distance refers to how far or uh, close you are to the map. So obviously my top few maps are where I am now in Toronto, um, the bottom one, Texas, and then uh, Pisgah Ranger Forest. We are not there either, sorry, Pisgah National Forest. Uh, so they're at the bottom, but I prefer to sort by name. So we're going to keep it there. You also can see on the right, the size of the search icon, the next line back, there is another option for filters, the three lines that go down. So you can filter your maps to see specific ones that you'd like. So you can see imported maps, you can see uh, folders and collections, active maps, inactive maps, maps only, and all items. So we've got one imported map for maps and collectors. We want to decide that. And we'll see once we turn on the filter, the blue, there's a little blue box around that. So we know that that is on. So if you import a map or you download a map from the map store and you have it set to only folders and collections, then you cannot find your map. You most likely have one of these turned on and you just have to put it back to all items and then you'll be able to see everything. The active versus inactive maps refer to imported maps. So if you have the free version of the app and you've imported three maps, all three maps will be active. If you go to import a fourth map, it will be inactive uh, because you are only able to have three active maps at a time with the free version. If you have a subscription, a plus or a pro subscription, you have unlimited active maps. Um, so you'll be able to see them all there. Maps from the map store are unlimited. So you can download and purchase as many maps from the map store as you want. You can see at the top too, there's the option for maps. But we'll keep it on all items so we can see everything. So we're gonna go into one of our maps. And we're gonna look at how we can use the map. Tools on the map. So we're gonna open our TTC map at the bottom. And we'll see here, we're on our map, our blue dot is there. Our bottom toolbar has four icons. I can have the location one on the far left. It turns blue and it centers on our location. I can zoom in and it will keep us centered. If I tap it again, it will rotate the map to any direction that I'm pointing. So it may move a little bit quick, hopefully not too fast. You'll see I'm moving the tablet around and the screen is changing direction. So on the top, you'll notice that the blue bar has the direction that we're pointing in. Um, so 180 degrees east. And we'll see there's a little compass icon at the top right, which moves with how we're moving the device. So if I want to stop this, Turn it off, I'll tap that compass button, it'll flip back around. This will only work if you have a compass built in on your device. Most phones have a compass built in, but not all tablets do. This iPad has one, uh, but not all iPads will have a compass. Not all Android tablets will have a compass. So you'll be able to tell. If you go to tap that, you'll get a little error that will say no compass. So it won't work, but make sure you have a user here. You can also zoom in by Pinching out and then, sorry, zoom in by pinching out and zoom out by pinching in. Um, standard as you would do on lots of other things, but you're uh, We're going to look at next the coordinates. So at the bottom, we have our toolbar here with our coordinates in the middle. If I tap that, I'm going to get an option of display formats for our coordinates. Um, so the default is latitude, longitude, and whatever projection the map is in. You can change those to how you see fit. There's also the option for latitude and longitude in WTS 84. And then you can see there's the option for easting and northing, as well as MR, MGRS, the military uh, grid coordinate system. So, whatever you pick, I pick uh, the last one here, latitude, longitude, WTS 84. It will update the bottom. So, it's hard to see it. You'll notice if you move around the map, it will move. Or they will adjust to where the cross their location is. So, so we'll probably we can always tap it to open it up to view it in a different coordinate. Um, 
Next, we are going to look at adding place marks. So you can do so easily with your place mark button there at the bottom left beside the location. So if I center my crosshair over a spot I would like to drop a place mark, I will tap the place mark button and this little dialog will come up that will allow me to add a place mark. So here I can change the title. So the intersection I believe is St. Clair, so I can choose St. Clair. And then I can choose my icon. So the default is the red pin, but you can change it. As you can see here, we have the ATM sign, the blue pin, and an orange pin. Mm. If I tap those three dots beside symbol, I will be able to see other symbols that are available to me. Standard different color symbols are there. And then you also have access to the National Park Service Recreation symbols. So I don't think we're going horseback riding in the middle of the city, but say we choose parking and we tap that, and if the parking symbol will be selected, I can add photos if I'd like. Uh, I can set a description. So say I want to say that uh, there was 15 parking spots here. I'm going here and I can write 15 spots. Now I know. And we've got the time as well as the location. And when I'm done, I'll hit submit at the top right and it will be added. And we'll see that we have a little key there. And then the title of the place marker there as well. If we tap the information I, it will come up and we can see all of our information. So we're, we're running out of time. I have till 6.30, so I'm gonna stop it there. If there's any questions, I would highly recommend finishing this. It's got really great info on how to set waypoints, how to get import, some, and bringing in a picture, taking a picture, adding notes to it, a description, you know, all these different things you can do, which is super helpful. Tracking is really easy. Um, you just hit track and it'll follow your track, but there's a lot of things you can do with that track as well. So this link will be out and I think Ed already had, it's on the, on the email that he sent out. So you can take this link, watch it, finish it up. There's the advanced version of it as well, which I would recommend play with this and then start messing with the advanced version because you can do some pretty amazing things in here. And the export import, Part of this is really cool. You can, you know, you can use your eye drop. You can do all of that to drop. If you're next to somebody and you have an Apple product, you can just drop it. So you can start just dropping maps and sharing maps with a ton of different people. So some really cool stuff. But any questions? So can, we, can you put coordinates in? Yes, you can go navigate by coordinates. You can find coordinates. So you just put it into there's a, when you go to the, I believe it's a top right three dashes, um, it'll go in and it'll say, you know, navigate two. navigate two coordinates and then you just punch in your coordinates and okay. go. So there's a zip search for a copy of that. Okay. Or copy and paste it in the zip search. Yeah, that's what I was. And with this, um, one more note, like when, when the lightning maps come out that we get from Intera, you can take those maps that I email out and bring them right into Aventa and now you're navigating live. So if you got one of those little lightning bolts, you can navigate right to it, you know, and it'll show you where it's at. So that's another, this is great for that. All right, well, I don't want to go over my time because Ed will scold me. <laughs> Any more questions for Paul? You know where to find him. And as you can see uh, from what Bill's putting up there, we've linked the video and the PowerPoint presentation he used tonight. And we know how to get a hold of him. Any awesome. questions? All right. Cool. Thank you.